from Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. With Gina Grad on news, Bald Brian on sound effects, and Cousin Sal joins Dave Damashek and Adam for good sports. And now, not fragile, but definitely white, Adam Corolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice, but got the mandate. You get it on, man. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for telling a friend. Love that about you. Uh, hmm. Good day, Gina Grad. Good day to you. Handball, Brian. Hi, guy. Hi, guy. All right. Well, it's just us uh, today. Our guest dropped, but uh, we prepped his birthday cocktail party. And yeah. uh, I, I watched his movie. And you watch his movie. So uh, I thought it would be... I thought it'd be good. I can't even think of who dropped. Who dropped Max Pat? Oh, Scott Atkins. Yeah, that's right. Um, we will. Uh, so at least we have that. We have uh, some some of my uh, audio book, and uh, some Dawson's got an audio book as well. Uh, we and also yes. can I can I just say this because I can't stop thinking about it, and it's something that I'm sure Brian's aware of. I I don't remember ever hearing of it, and I watched a movie last night that I can't stop thinking about. Um, am I the only one who saw District Nine from like oh. ten years ago? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I uh, uh, you're late to the party, Gina. Uh, I, uh, I can't stop thinking about it. It's amazing. That's it's the insane. alien. That's the alien movie. Yeah. Yeah. For, like it's, in, in Johannesburg, so that's got yeah. a lot of political messages. The aliens come down to Johannesburg, and they're sort of treated like second-class citizens. A lot of apartheid themes. It, it's very like old-school Twilight Zone, you know, when you think you're talking about the aliens, but who knows what you're really. T- but it's it's a fantastic movie. It's very uh, good. Put uh, put the director uh, on the map, and uh, Peter, Charles was, Copley, who was the the main the main actor. Yeah, he's great. He's like a he's like a, a Christian Bale type. If you come, and he's life. got a lot of range. He uh, he yeah. was in uh, he was the bad guy in Elysium, which is the same director. You know, he it, was the. Andy said we're watching that next. <laughs> it's, it's 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 okay. It's a good. One. Okay. I anyway, couldn't... I just wanted to see if uh, if I was so late to this party. Little, but <laughs> it, it's been out, but not everyone saw it, so they should no. go see it and. It's great. Uh, I can't watch Elysium because Elysium was the name of the nudist camp that my grandmother <laughs> wanted me to go to when I was like 25. That and explains like, so much of the plot. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like, they got volleyball there. I like when they list things at a nudist camp. They got, they got bumper pool. They got mm-hmm. volleyball. They have a barbecue. It's like, oh, where could you possibly find those things other than a nudist camp? I, you're right. I haven't had barbecue in uh, 41 years because uh, I'm never willing to stand naked with other guys. By the way, nude in a barbecue doesn't sound awesome to me. I don't like, uh, yeah, I don't don't like hot grills and I certainly don't like flare-ups around the nads. So uh, she was always pitching, go to Elysium. Elysium was in uh, Topanga Canyon. By the way, do you guys remember when things that were places that were 16 miles away from you felt exotic because of your oh, parents yeah. pile of shit car and how much complaining they would do like oh, that's in Topanga Canyon we can't go there oh, well, I want to go to Raging Waters like the water park by me like it's probably probably 16 18 miles away oh that was it that would that required planning like six months of planning I was just talking to Cranston Brian Cranston who as we're doing this is at the other shop and he's laying down a bunch of stuff for our mad magazine documentary and he is one of the few guys that grew up in the deep San Fernando Valley like he he's from here his parents are from you know his mom is like they're like Chatsworth like the corner of the valley And the corner of the valley, now, the way the valley is, look at it as, uh, l- let's just look at it as the lid of a shoebox. <laughs> and, Apt comparison. Yeah, but with more, a little less culture than the <laughs> lid of a shoebox. But <laughs> put the lid of the shoebox down in front of you, put your hand on the bottom right-hand corner, that corner sort of leads into Hollywood, and that's where you kind of have your studio cities and your Toluca Lakes and stuff. Go to the back rail, the far away rail, and then slide to the left, and that's where you get the Chatsworths and the Canoga Parks of the world. The Pacoima. That's not what you want. That's not mm-hmm. what you want. And although it's not what you want now, back then there were just you know apricot orchards and stuff back then. Literally 
Cranston tell me ride a horse like from place to place, sure. you know, Spawn Ranch, you know, yep. Yep. out there. That's just in the ass corner of the of the valley. But we were, you know, it's funny. I don't get a, I'm not into that uh, 818 stuff or the 310 or whatever. They, but whenever I see Cranston, he's always like, you are the old school valley dude. And we mm-hmm. can start talking about stuff that we kind of remember from back in the day. And we started talking about he was talking about the coronavirus and all the kids and being kind of freaked out, kind of taking that with them. And he said, you know, when we were kids, we just get on our bikes and just head out. And I was like, we'd go to the Sepulveda Basin. The Sepulveda Basin is where they had like a flood control area out here. This is a big, weird damn thing that they used to film a lot of car commercials and stuff in front of. And, and also things like, uh, they have movies Reef. that movies. Yeah, they'd have. Well, mo- that was like, yeah, that was in the actual uh, that was in the uh, Los Angeles River, which used oh. to be the cement river. But they'd film movies like, uh, I don't know, Escape from New L.A. and stuff like that. It was this weird futuristic kind of dam they, they had over there. Anyway, the other side of it was just swamp. And you just mush around in the swamp, like try to catch dragonflies or just all day, just mush around. No, no, no hydration, no bottled anything, no snacks, no prepackaged anything, no sunblock, no radio, no earbuds, no nothing. Just trance, just trance about in that Being area. Now. And it is interesting. So as we're sort of sliding into this thought, uh, I said, uh, I was thinking uh, you know, I've said a million times, no better time to be poor. And everyone always thinks I'm kidding, but I'm, I'm really not there. I, and I started thinking about TV sets and I was thinking about my, uh, Zenith black and white 13 inch Zenith that I had to watch when I was a little kid, but the TV technology from the time I was a little kid watching the 13 inch Zenith TV to the time when I was graduating high school it was a slightly bigger version of the 13 inch I was watching as a kid. There wasn't anything there. Were, there was nothing going on other than it was a little bit bigger. It's kind of it, it, whatever happened to muffins happened to TVs. Muffins used to be like a regular size, like muffins used to be a baseball size. And then they started ballooning up yeah. into into grapefruit size. But whatever the trajectory of the muffin was, that's what my TV was. And I realized my kids were born. They have the 4K. They got the computer stuff. They got all these different networks out there. And then also, there I've seen commercials for like 85-inch flat panel TVs for like $4.99. Yeah, you can get a very serviceable, good TV, flat screen TV these days with like all the smart TV with Roku and everything and stream all your shows for a very affordable price, shockingly affordable. So I said to Max Pat, and I don't know if we found any of those big 90 inches or 85 inches, nothing under 500. What's the cheapest 85 incher you can fi- find oh, out yeah. there? Uh, is that what you're looking for, or what are you looking for? Well, we were looking. I was looking for 90s, but I'll find a, a cheap. 80s. All right, just a big one, whatever. What was uh, a, a Sony Trinitron from like 1975 <laughs> color? Seven hundred twenty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents for Ooh, a. S- that's a 17 incher. Yes. <laughs> what would the street? What was the adjusted inflation value of that? Three thousand four hundred ninety-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. You had to be actual royalty to afford that set. Well, it's, I'm old enough to remember uh, when, like, having a big screen, like you knew one or two people at big screen. Right. And they made it. Like they they were rich. Well, and, well, and Brian. Referring to, but the big screen with the red light. Green yeah, the other projector, right. the front yeah. projection. Yeah, we had my one friend, friend like that. My friend Tom had that. My only black friend was my only rich friend, <laughs> so I'm all screwed up. But um, of course, people would break into your house because this thing was the size of a toaster oven. It was worth three grand. <laughs> of course, they'd rip it, rip it out of your out of your house. All right, Max Bata, biggest, cheapest TV. You can do it any size you want. Oh, you go to. Costco or or uh, Walmart, Walmart yeah. or something. Okay. That's a Walmart. Uh, Costco. There's a 75 inch shirt. Uh, it's seven or five hundred fifty dollars. Not bad. I still think you can go lower, at least from That's these commercials absurd. I see. But it's it's nuts how big and how fast and how cheap and how 
you know, once something doesn't have moving parts, the price can just keep dropping. I'm old enough to remember when guys with digital watches were a big deal and then they yeah. they went from super expensive, a digital watch where you had to like push a button to get the display to light up to essentially free when you fill up with a tank of gas. Yeah. Um, so speaking of mechanical, I am uh, prepping my race car to uh, take it out to Laguna Seca to do our uh, big race coming up in a week or so. And there's something super satisfying about the prep. I don't know. I think it's my mechanical gene. And it's also, I love guys that know shit, which is my car that I'm racing has uh, open stacks. It has an open velocity stacks. There is no air filter on it. Okay. It's just open trumpets, they would probably call it. Max Pat, you can probably get a picture of this from DeAndre or Sean or something of the engine of that car, but it's just open. And you don't want open per se. Open makes the most horsepower, but also it's it's a little dangerous if you get off the track or there's some dust or something, it sucks something into it, a pebble or something, it'll ruin your engine or shorten the life of your engine. So the reason everyone runs air filters in the in your car it's kind of the same reason you're wearing a mask today like it's easier with no mask but you might suck something in or push but something wait, out if you're going top speed on a racetrack with nothing but pebbles and dust how does that work some some guys will do it and just kind of hope they don't get off if you, if you get off the track it's a big cloud of gravel and, and dust uh, or if someone gets off the track in front of you you're also vacuum cleaner just sucking right. up tons of cubic mm-hmm. oxygen of, of air um but anyway i said uh, well we got to do something we got to protect this i can't just run open stack so uh, my guy Sean just put a fine screen mesh into the into the stack just a stainless steel fine mesh like a, the, a screen that would be in the bottom of a one or a calendar some sifter sieve or something mm-hmm. like that or, or a tea one of those teacups as a matter of fact some guys use those like teacups oh, yeah. strainers on their on their stacks anyway uh senate somehow the guy who built the race car saw it and he's like you don't want to do that and like why not it's like that screen at high RPM, at like maximum high RPM, thins out the air. You don't get the volume. Mm. You, it's cut. It, it, it's cut into 30% or so. It, it just does. And when you thin, when you cut the volume of the air, it leans out the car. The fuel to air mixture gets off, and you're not going to have what you want at the top end of the rev range. You, you'll, you, it'll idle fine. You can rev it. You can do whatever. But once you get way up at 8,000 RPM, it's not going to, you're not, it's going to, it's going to drag. It's going to lean out the fuel. It's going to fuck up with the mixture. And so I'm like, thank you. Thank you guy who knows everything about dots and 510 engines. And then I went and had to go lay it on Sean, who's a pretty proud guy. And he's like, well, I don't know about that. I'm like, Hey, sorry, man. That's what this guy says. And he builds these cars all day long. So the beautiful screen that you sculpted, uh, pull it all off and let's get a foam You can get these high volume, like foam air filters on there. But it is get the seat, get the height of the seat, get the harnesses in, in thing, pack, everything get everything in the trailer all the backup shit you need all the tools all the batteries all the gauges all the all the stuff you need for cleaning and lifting and working and extra set of brake pads and extra this and this process of like going once you get to the track you're on your own so if you didn't bring it you're not, you don't have it. Mm-hmm. And you, did you bring your zip ties? Did you bring the duct tape? Did you bring I was the, just going to say zip ties and a hanger. Do you have the kind of cleaner that works on plastic so you can do the plastic uh, mask on the, on the helmet and then the stuff that's good for glass so you can do the windshield of the car, whatever that, whatever that stuff is. It's super, um, it's super satisfying to me. It's just satisfying. And then as it gets closer, it's like, Sean's like, I'm going to start the car up today and we're going to get it up to temperature and blah, blah, blah. Of course, the worst part is, is Cranston's in the back of the shop filming and Nate 
tell Sean and my other guy, like, you guys got to be quiet. You can't do any work when we got Kranz in here. But they're still on the clock. Sure. So it, it drives me insane. On the other hand, it's Cranston and it's my doc. So what are you, you going to do? You know what they should do, I'm, though I'm sure they have already? Make a master checklist. Anything they could possibly think of, throw up on a whiteboard or something. Mm. Check it off as you go. It's funny. The guys that are good are just good. They have, the first thing they have is a clock. And it's not, uh, it's not a digital clock. It's an analog clock because out in the sunlight, the digital kind of goes away. They have just an analog clock with a battery in it, and it's right on, like, their trailer. And then they have the run groups and all the run times, and it's just taped right next to it. And then their group is highlighted. Those are those that, that's the first thing, like, all the good guys do because they want to know when their group is going. And so on and so on. It's just it's – a, it's a good exercise – in general, as we were kind of talking about yesterday, just that structure and that organization. Mike, 38, Virginia. Hey, Ace Man, how you doing? What's going on? You have, you have a pandemic-themed so, uh, rich man, yeah, poor man? Yeah, I got some pandemic-themed uh, rich man, poor man. I'm all ears. Right on. So the first one I thought of was received a check from the government. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. It's good. But eh, right. there's some middle class people getting some of that, too. Yeah, that's true. Um, other one I had was skipping meals. Mm, like you're poor. Mm. Like Jack Dorsey on his three day mm. fast, the CEO of Twitter. Or yeah. You just can't afford to eat. Yeah, that guy. Exactly. Or guys are too busy. Yeah. Working too hard or maybe doing in- intermittent fasting on some weird, crazy diet. That guy That's does good. like the cold water plunges and everything. I'm going to shit on this one as well, because uh, <laughs> I haven't p- poor people in general are now fatter than rich people in our society. They just the food is so fucking cheap and so abundant. Now, I mean, you see like Jack in the Box commercials. It's like you get a you get a mini box of mini tacos with 14 mm-hmm. mini tacos in it for 89 cents. Like it, this stuff is so got which you could go down to Wiener Schnitzel and get three chili dogs and a, a large fry for Ooh. under five bucks now. Like it's insane. Those Sonic commercials. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. No, it's, what's terrifying if you think about it, all these companies are making money. Mm. <laughs> They're turning a profit on, on these ridiculously cheap food. How much must it cost them? I, the, the, the insane thing is I look at it all the time. Like you sold a box with nine mini tacos in it for a buck 19 and you're turning a profit. You have real estate, you have employees, you have insurance, you have OSHA and all the other fulfillments and everything. And the person that prints the box and the truck that takes it and somehow you're still yep. making money. Yes. Yeah. That what's in that box must be scary, but yes, poor people for the first time in not this nation's history in the world's history, certainly, and obviously less in the third world, but the first time in recorded history, Poor people passed rich people on a on on the scale. Literally, I, that has Literally. to be true now. Does, does yeah. it not? Like, I mean, when you guys sure. just travel around, does it seem yeah. that way? Yeah, and and that's the thing. I mean, we we all have seen portraits and pictures hanging in the museum. All the rich people were fat. That's how you knew they were rich. Mm-hmm. And those days are long gone because, like you said, not only is the food abundant, the processed food, the yummy food, the mm-hmm. salty food is abundant, and it's 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 killing us. I, yeah, your sign of wealth used to be, you know, you're, you're chubby or you're Rubenesque or whatever. You were well fed. Now it's I can afford a Peloton or I can afford a personal trainer. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the sign of wealth. You know, I was saying to someone the other day, maybe I was talking to Dr. Drew, you know, our sort of government approach to it, which is like we're going to limit the soft drinks to 16 ounces or something like that when people would just buy two 12 ounces and drink those or whatever it is like this sort of people are going to at some point have to get really educated in this department. Right. There's, n- there's no amount of regulation. that's going to stop people from getting their hands on this shit and getting fat. And there's no way to do it from the sort of the outside in it's an inside out thing. Like people are going to have to fucking start focusing here. Yes, Gina. Well, let me, let me pose this to you. I can't find the story. I, I had it in front of me for a while. I'm, I might've gotten rid of it, but 
um, something I was going to bring up at some point was they are thinking about a sugar tax. Now, these sin taxes, you know, maybe they, you know, if you're a smoker, you're going to spend 12 bucks on a carton of cigarettes, you know, but they're thinking about doing a sugar tax and that it's worked in other countries when you just go, eh, not worth it. Too, too expensive now to get a, a pack of M&Ms or whatever. What do you think of that kind of regulation? Because I know in general, you're not a fan. If you raise the price of something enough, it's going to cut back, you know, even gasoline, you know, and we all need gasoline. But when we're going through a gas crisis um, in the 70s, OPEC embargo or whatever's going on, People did a little less driving and a little more kind of carpooling. And, you know, they, you can push people that direction. If if water becomes super, super duper expensive, people will start putting in like synthetic lawns and a percentage of people will do that. By the way, uh, can we make a rule? I just got back from Texas and I'm going back there again when we were driving to the airport. I'm going to circle back to this, uh, Gina. But uh, in Texas... Gallons of gas start with the let start with the number one. It's like, mm-hmm. like it's one sixty six per gallon. Here, our starts with three. And all I all I want to do is make a rule that says there can only be there can't be a number in between Texas and us in terms of that first digit. Let's just make a rule that if if we're gonna start with three, Texas has to start they gotta go with two oh one or two dollars a gallon, then we'll do three eighty nine or whatever it is. But if they're gonna do a if they're fucking a, a state or two over and they're going like a they start with a one, we should start with a two. It still would suck with us, but we should start with a two. No, we start with a three. It's it's such a crazy tax on the people. Look, to to us, it sucks, but it's not brutal. To all the guys who work for me, who drive trucks, who have to one day they're in Canoga Park, the next day they're out in Malibu working, and the next day they're downtown. I like they're traveling around. They got their truck. They're all driving full size trucks. That's fucking. That's a big chunk for them. Oh, yeah. uh, it'd be nice if we could uh, work on that. But anyway. Gas is expensive as shit. It doesn't stop people from driving. You don't need sugar. You want sugar, and you do kind of need that. It would, it would, I believe it would make some difference, but, um, you know, it what you'd really have to make it a high price point. Like, you yeah. couldn't go pack a peanut M&M's goes from 89 cents to $2 that right. more than double people would still buy the, the M&M's. And at some point we just got to get, pe- people are going to have to learn to regulate themselves. Well, see, this is, this is something that I, I don't mean to be naive, but I was shocked by it. I was at the, you know, the, the old faithful grocery store over here by my house. And there was a woman with a, I would say a two or three year old sitting in the front of the basket. And she had a two baskets full of like, um, like a, a case of Snickers each. So maybe, I don't know, 24 Snickers, 50 Snickers, whatever in each box. And she was carrying them out. And her, her toddler had those, um, like metal, uh, caps and metal, like, um, you know, cavity stuff like all over their mouth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When they're the metal ones. Yeah. Uh, and no, I, I don't. Like, Are we talking about braces? We had, no, no, no. We had, we had a neighbor kid growing up who had those, and he was like maybe four or five. And they're very cheap. They're like if, you're, um, if your kid has cavities, like fillings, like silver metal fillings, but they also go around. Oh, the, oh, the cap. Like, oh, you know, yeah. the cap. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, and I got I'm thinking, you. I'm, I, I didn't I, know people had that in the modern era. Well, well, at the grocery store, I was behind oh, them. Oh, you're, is... you're not at the Gelson's or the Whole no, no, Foods. No, 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 no. I said my grocery store. You're at the John's. Yeah, that's I get what I'm it. talking about. No, I got it. A woman who's maybe a little stout yeah. uh, carrying two giant boxes of Snickers and her, her little baby already has fillings. Yeah. So how what, what what's to be done, you know? I, I don't know what's I don't know what's to be done. Uh, I had that this picture in my head also at the supermarket because people aren't educated it would seem so easy to get them this information now what they do with it who knows but i don't think most people have the info they don't know what we know and what Vinny knows and like i told you at my supermarket the nice supermarket gina without all the little people who are 10 the times super without the little <laughs> without the little you people you can't get pig's feet at your supermarket true. without the little people who are now big um <laughs> 
there was a very big uh, white woman who worked there and she was going on her break. And I've told you guys this story before, but clearly she was going out to the parking lot to do some shame eating, you know, mm. and she kind of sure. had, she had a couple of candy bars and the candy bars, she was kind of put them on the thing or she was kind of doing it. She kind of, I saw her sort of slipping it into the bag real quick and kind of keeping it out of the way, but had a big fresh pressed, like a 16 ounce orange juice. Right. And that she put out like a beacon. So that she was like, hey, everybody, look at me, fat person eating healthy. Put that right out there. The candy bars were hidden. Obviously, Vinny would tell you this big fat woman is eating her candy bars, but thinks she's going to somehow even the playing field a little when she has this fresh press, big thing of OJ. And Vinny would tell you that you're just flooding your, your liver with sugar. With that, yeah. with that big thing. So she, glycemic load. she thinks she's doing the right thing with that. I mean, how much bigger she's going to get going to the parking lot every day at noon and having her mounds bar versus washing it down with that huge OJ. Mm-hmm. It's going to, it's going to compound her interest. Yeah. And that's the thing. And I think it starts with little kids. Cause we always say, you know, Oh, well, you know, fruit, 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 fruit. It's, it's good for you. And, and sure. And it is, and they're going to burn it off. And this, the one we have here is always running around crazy, but I get all these ads on Facebook and stuff like how to make healthy snacks for your kids. And it's frozen blueberries, then um, milk and orange juice and blend it up and they love it. And I, so when he saw me looking at that on the computer and he begged for it, I said, yeah, we can have that for dessert. We can do a dessert night, but that's not breakfast. Juice and frozen blueberries? Everyone, that sort of natural or sweetened with dates or whatever it is, everyone really gets caught up in it. And it's been around for a long time, hence things like carob when I was a kid. But look, (laughs) if it's really sweet and it tastes good, the sugar's coming from somewhere. And it's either coming from a sugar cane or it's coming from a date or it's coming from a berry. And yeah, I'd rather have my kids eat the the date sweetened or the whatever, but it's it's a marginal difference. Mike August, by the way, hit the Smoothie King up when we were in Texas last week. Oh, Max yeah. Banner. On brand. Yeah, yeah. Nearly, nearly uh had to run over a center divider to, to get there. He just saw it on the way on the left. I said, hey, a Smoothie King, and just like it's an instant reaction, just torques, his, torques oh, the wheel left. <laughs> Mike. Mike has found uh, a new level of, of dangerous on the highway, which is... We usually hop in these rental cars, and they're just these little pea shooter rental cars. In Texas, he got a full size Ram, a Dodge Ram truck. Yeah. And he's like, I feel like I could drive over anything in this thing. <laughs> and sure enough, he's going sure over enough. center dividers. When we went to the airport to return it, we went over the curb and we went over the <laughs> over the sidewalk. And he's now he used to drive with a certain amount of impunity. Anyone who's been to Europe with him knows uh, he, he drives hard and likes to let everyone know that we're uh, two for two, two for two, back and to world, back, world back to back champs, World War champs. But he's in a Dodge truck now, and he's just going over the top of everything. And he went to the Smoothie King, and I said to him, uh, "What'd you get at the Smoothie?" He's like, five dollar Friday, five dollar Friday." It, it, if someone would just open a smoothie king near Mike's house, I guarantee, I can't guarantee, I can't guarantee that you'd be printing money, but I can guarantee you would keep the lights on. I can yeah, guarantee that you would least. never go out of, never go out of business. Yeah, he got the pineapple mango smoothie. Oh God, <laughs> the worst one you could possibly get. It's good. The, the exotic fruit one. Oh, hey, Mike from Virginia, do you have any more uh, <laughs> pandemic themed uh, rich man, poor man? Uh, yeah, I do. And I'll say uh, I got gas for $1.91 a gallon today at uh, Costco oh, here. So I, that I, felt pretty good. I grew up in SoCal, so I know the pain. I remember I remember when it was five fifty five a gallon in like 05, 06. Yeah. It got really high at yeah. a certain point. It's still. A yeah, l- a couple of my uh, buddies were had like their own pool cleaning services down in Orange County and they were just, they were getting their ass kicked. Um, well, obviously yeah, the it, other first uh, off, rich so, man, hold, poor man, hold on, hold never on, went to the hold, hold on. Oh. It, it kicks the shit out of poor people, but also like rich people can kind of work from home or work from their computer, or, like trade that can be a day trader or something like that. When you, when you don't have money, you get in your fucking truck or car every day. You have to drive to work. And, Oftentimes, if your work is in like Westwood or Century City or Beverly Hills or somewhere nice, 
you live in Pacoima or Simi yeah. Valley or something like you got to truck it in. Like if a lot of these sort of middle class people in SoCal, if you want to own a home, you can't afford two point seven million dollars in Studio City. You have to go to Simi Valley or some you know, uh, Lancaster, Newhall or Saugus or yep. something where they're like, there's a new housing development. You can get a nice house for $741,000. And the person's like, okay, but I work in Westwood. I have to drive in every fucking morning because I want to own a house. At, at, at these prices, it just, it kicks the shit out of that person, out of that group. Again, people that are wealthy or, or even well off, it's a gas, it's, it's fine. Also, a lot of them may be driving a Prius or some version or more expensive hybrid car. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Oh, Mike, did he hang up now? Fuck. Oh, no. I felt oh. bad because he had one well, more going. Here's yes. one um, that I, I'm sure we've done before, but this for some reason was going around online, speaking two languages. Mm, yeah, yeah. That is a good rich man, poor man. It's not a it's not 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 a real middle class thing, although my you're either in immersion school or your parents don't speak English. My uh, Natalia announced she was taking Spanish as her elective where Sonny is taking acting. <gasps> uh, by the way, what a what? Yeah, he likes acting. He likes improv. He likes that. What elective, by the way, I don't think anyone's going back to school anytime. Not in California. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Natalia can probably pull off her elective. What is he going to do? Zoom monologues, which I need recorded, by the way. I don't. I do not know. Uh, maybe I'll get a little uh, soliloquy from Our Town or something like that. We'll sure. have him we'll you film You must him. share this with me. Uh, every expert I hear says kids are pretty much good with this pandemic, and it's tough to have it. kids spread it to adults also kind of hard. Uh, and also kids are suffering. Every expert says they need to open the schools uh, left and right. I don't, I don't, it must be the unions. Like, I don't know what the, the big whoop is. Get the fucking kids back in school, figure it out. If, if everything, if other businesses, if we were figuring it out, I mean, we're figuring out Trader Joe's, then fucking figure out school. I, I think I, everyone's getting used to staying home and getting paid. Well, and that's the thing. Are, are we kind of in agreement at this point that we all sort of know kids are not super spreaders and they don't seem to have um, bad side effects, but the teachers and the adults don't want to be back in the school together. It's not really I, I get about it. the I kids. get it, pussies, but what the fuck is everyone else doing who works at a Trader Joe's? Right. But I'm just saying I think we've let go of the kind of the fib. Yes. That it's about the what, what I'm saying is, is I'll tell you what. Um, Tell everyone at Trader Joe's they can go home and not get paid and see if they don't start talking about how dangerous it is to go back to the Trader Joe's. Once you stay home and get paid, it's, it's tough. Cut the salary in half, all the administrators, all the teachers, everybody, cut it in half, and then see if their attitude changes. See if they're thinking about getting back to work. I bet there's a change in attitude. That's just me. Hey, sorry, Max Pat, did you have that clip? I had a clip from a few days back, which is, I don't know, it was a CNN clip where they just said to all these pediatric sort of experts or educators or whatever, they're like, would you let your kid go back? Like, what do you think? Oh, it's MSNBC. Kalen will put it up. MSNBC. The, the point is, is there's a lot of downside to not going to school. There's a lot of people that are struggling a lot, including the aforementioned poor people who like have to go to work and their kids That's are home thing. and they're latchkeyed yeah. and, and all that shit. It's not... You know, hey, we're teachers. We're not going in until everything's a thousand percent safe. Everyone who's involved with this society, cops and uh, firemen and folks who work in grocery markets and folks that work at airports, they're all back to fucking work. There's a risk, but they're all going back to work because we don't want to live in a society that doesn't have stores that are open or, or airports that are open. I said, do you have that, Max Zapata? Would you let your kids go back to school? I will. My kids are looking forward to it. Yes. Period. Absolutely. Absolutely. As much as I can. <laughs> Without a hesitation. Without a hesitation, yes. I have no concerns about sending my child to school in the fall. I would let my kids go back Pop to school. pediatrician. Dr. John Torres, in. NBC News. And this is MSNBC. <laughs> the guy at the desk yes. didn't seem happy about it, but yes, all the experts, <laughs> I know you didn't want to hear that, but all the experts say they're going to fucking let their kids go back to school. Okay, we're following the science. I thought we were following the science. The science is, is weighed in. 
Uh, I'm not. Uh, look, this thing of like, hey, teachers unions, you need to be 1000 percent risk free before you go back. I don't know. What if you get into a car accident on your way to school? Or what if a fucking kid stabs you in the neck with a pen? Just get the fuck back up and go to work like everyone else is doing. You have an important job, school teachers. Firemen are important. Cops are important. People that work at the Trader Joe's are important. And you too, teachers, have a important job, a necessary job. So go ahead, weigh the risk in, and now go the fuck back to work. Except for you're getting paid in full and you have a fucking union that doesn't want you to go back to work. They want to keep getting paid full. Okay. Can we sunset their pay? Uh, when is school supposed to start? You know, well, it starts uh, September 7th. Good. Starting September 8th, your pay gets cut or we cut it in half or whatever that is. And then we'll just see if your attitude changes. Fuck. I used to hate teachers, but now I really, I loathe them. They're so fucking horrible. You've evolved your opinion. I've evolved. I went from hatred to super hatred. My favorite experiment of all time is just being in an auditorium of a thousand people and just go, raise your hand if you've had a great teacher. And everyone's hand goes up. They go, now keep your hand up if you've had two great teachers. And three quarters of people drop their hand (laughs) out of a hundred teachers. All right. Let me hit uh, Pure Talk USA. I like these guys. I figured out how they work with uh, AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile. Are you with any of those? You can switch on over to Pure Talk USA. Use the exact same network as one of those. Same towers, same coverage. Uh, Literally, the cost will be in half. So I've heard their commercials, and I was like, how do you how do you do this? And the, they deal with the same towers and the same companies. Again, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. They just cut the price and you can save half. Keep uh, you keep it in your phone. It's a uh, it's a little SIM card. They send it to you. Same service I had before. Just pop in the SIM card. Half the price. Unlimited talk, text, two gigs of data. Just 20 bucks a month. The average person saves 400 bucks a year. And put that in your gas tank if you uh, live out here in SoCal. And uh, the customer service is in the U.S. And the CEO is a veteran who understands what it means to serve. It is Pure Talk USA. Right, Dawson? Get unlimited talk, unlimited text, plus two gigs of data. All you need to do is grab your mobile phone, dial pound 250, and say keyword Adam Carolla. That's pound 250, and say Adam Carolla. And when you do, you'll save 50% off your first month. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come right back after this. The Adam Carolla Show presents Scott Adkins' Birthday Cocktail Party for June 17th. Let's check out the guest list. Oh, it's Kendrick Lamar. And he brought all 13 of his Grammys. Little Miss Sunshine's Greg Kinnear. It's Venus Williams and Will Forte. And straight from the He's Still Alive files, Newt Gingrich. Barry Manilow is here, and it looks like he's ready to take a chance again. Thomas Hayden Church. And 20th century Russian composer, Igor Stravinsky. Now that's a party. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Well, he canceled, but we had that thing preloaded, and and I... It was so good. I thought, well, fuck it, play it, play it anyway. I uh, got a call here from uh, Nick in Buffalo. Um, I had, uh, let's see. Okay, let me, uh, we, we had a funny kind of merch situation come up that Chris Maxpatter just brought to my attention moments ago. Uh, Maxpatter, what was the situation? All right, so anybody who goes on adamcarolla.com, they can order merch. And uh, one of the shirts that we offer is the Don't Do Your Best, Do Bo- Do My Best shirt. And we got a letter from a listener uh, to our support uh, system for the merch store. And she wrote, good morning. I hope this finds you well. I hate to be that customer. I received my full order this morning, and I was wondering what I have to do to exchange an item. The T-shirt I bought says, don't do your best, do my best. And then on the back, it's supposed to have the Adam Carolla logo on it. That's not the case. The front is fine. However, the back does not have the logo on it at all. That's what. Uh, and then she sent the picture of what actually was sent, and I'll put it on your guys' screen right now. Hmm. The so here's the front. The 
the front. Okay, it says, don't do your best, do my best. So we're getting a little buffering with this. This background you got going camera. on is absurd. <laughs> the filters, t- uh, the background's hard. Okay, oh, there it goes. Uh, don't, don't do, do your best, best, do my best. Right, that's what the front says. And on the back, it says, black women glow different. <laughs> well. <laughs> you know what, though? We stand by it. Also, I'm huge what? in the urban urban world. So uh, obviously, this is probably a black woman if she's just one of our f- listeners, because uh, you know it stands <laughs> yeah. to reason. Just playing the odds. Well, just playing the odds. Well, it, the, the issue's uh, already been handled. She's been sent the correct shirt, and she sent us this one just so we could laugh at it. Her name's Annie. So thank you, Annie. Well, that's going to be like one of those uh, record covers, like when the Beatles had one with the young topless girl the, or something on it, the, or the dead babies. babies. No, the that dead was babies. Blind Faith. They had yeah. the babies. Right, yeah. It's, it's, uh, when it, well, long after I'm gone, that'll be worth uh, that'll be worth a buck sixty nine. Yeah, we'll figure out something to do with it. I d- wow. I've been, I've been wanting to tell you guys this story for a long time uh, since I was in Chicago, but I just been sort of had it on the back burner. But so I went to Chicago, and I went to uh, I went to uh, sorry uh, Wisconsin, and had had some work. I did some work in Wisconsin at the Snap-on Tool Factory, and then I went to back to Chicago. Staying in Chicago, first thing first, uh, staying at a nice hotel. You walk in, and they do the they have a a mounted up up high forehead heat reader, so a thermostat thing, you know, temperature thermometer, and you just walk in and you step on a line, and the thing from five feet away or three feet away just reads your forehead. And uh, they do that. It's all the, the mask and everything. People want to know what's going on in hotels. It's the general. They have spots in the elevator for you to stand. It's it's not much of a science, but it's it, it'll work. And if, if somebody said to me, well, what happens if you have a fever? You're coming back. Like you go out for the night. You're mm-hmm. coming back in and you're reading uh, 101. Like I live in L.A. Where what? How are we going to do this? Anyway, I'm sure they have some protocol. Point is this. Um we went out on Thursday night to go to Gibson's, which is a great steak place. And it's right in the middle of Chicago and it's on Rush Street. And Rush Street's just sort of the, I don't know, the main drag on. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. A lot going on on a Thursday night, especially everyone's been cooped up. So everyone's in there and everyone is eating out on the patio and or the sidewalk because all these places had to improvise and push everyone out. Now, it's not in total fucking lockdown like L.A. is. So there's like uh, the indoor capacity is probably 20, 25 percent, you know, scattered people scattered around safely distancing of the tables. But the patio is kind of crowded and uh, and and so are the patios of all the restaurants that are across from Gibson's and up and down the street. So everyone is just pushed out on the street. It's July. It's it's you know it's warm oh, outside. Muggy. It, 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 it turned out it was nice. It turned to be okay. it turned to be nice patio weather. So it's seventy three degrees. It's nine o'clock at night. Everyone's out there having a martini, waiting for their steak to show up. But down Rush Street, the first group, there was just waves of guys, and the first wave were these guys in these like three wheel Polaris slingshots. These crazies got two front wheels and one rear wheel and it's just an open cockpit. I don't know if you guys have seen them. They're like mm-hmm. kind of funky transportation y uh thing. A rich man, poor man traveling <laughs> on a vehicle with three wheels. <laughs> because there's a rich version of that and then there's the sort of uh Vietnam version of the three wheel thing. But so these guys are just rolling in these Polaris slingshots. And so first the slingshot group comes and that's like four guys in slingshots. You know how the groups is like motorcycles. They kind of yeah. congregate yeah. Japanese car guys. Every single one of them has a highly modified stereo and they're all up to fucking 11. They're all up to 11. They're all eh, 25 year old black guys and they're cruising through because there's so much traffic, they're going through it like three miles an hour. They're just crawling down the street. Now, obviously, windows are shaking and everybody out there drinking their martini is fucking, it, we're going full Ella Fitzgerald on the glasses. 
But all the white people are out eating and having the martinis, and the brothers are rolling through with the Polaris, and it's fucking cranked up. And obviously, no one can say shit, right? Like, what, what are you going to do? Like, excuse me, sir. I'm trying to enjoy my steak. They're fucking disturbing the shit out of everybody who's out there eating because sure. it, it's just rap music cranked as loud as humanly possible. I'm like, okay. Then the next wave comes. The next wave are brothers in Jeeps. Now they're the Jeeps with the lift kits and the lights and the shit. And their stereo <laughs> is even fucking louder. I mean, everyone is, it's like as if you're sitting on the sidewalk eating and a guy's six feet away just rolling by at four miles an hour with the loudest fucking stereo you've ever heard in your life. No windows, no doors on the Jeep, just but again, Everyone who's sitting out there is just basically middle-aged whitey. You know, who's going to, what are you going to do, call the cops? Like, what what, what are we to do yeah. in this, this era we're in, right? Then the next group. Another is, wave? Oh, oh yeah. It, it's not like they're going to Gibson's or anything. They're, they're making passes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're just the, making um, passes. They're, they're yeah. not stopping and eating or going to the bar or anything. They're just they're cruising. slowly cruising by. Yeah, this street's like a restaurant row. There are, right. there are restaurants the entire way down with patio out, outdoor seating. The next group comes in, and they're on the big Harleys, but they have the big fair fairing in front with the stereo and stuff and they're <laughs> cranking and worse. they're throwing revs and I'm like god damn it I fucking sit I'm going out to eat for the first time in a long time I'm sitting in one of the best steak houses in the world I'm trying to have a martini and a conversation and everyone is just piling by just throwing revs cranking the music all brothers no one's gonna say shit especially in this this climate so they go by I'm like okay is there anyone else now Certain people are making double passes, like they're just circling around the block coming back. Mm-hmm. At the end, we go full Mad Max. Now it's a group of brothers on ATVs, like four wheels on quads. <laughs> yes, One guy, guy with an electric guitar. Electric guitar. Yeah. No, they're on they're on quads. They're on the quad ATV what you'd rent at Pismo Beach. Yeah, are these road No. No, they're not they're not road legal. There's no license no plate. There's place. no lights. They're fucking paddle tires and knobbies and shit. They're full two-stroke desert runner dirt bikes. Full dirt bikes, like 12 o'clock boys, if you see that that doc. It's a great well, doc. from Creed, yeah. Yeah, and they're just throwing revs because now they're two-stroke. It's like, bang, 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 bang. They're riding wheelies. <laughs> they're riding wheelies. I, the good news is, is the one good thing I could say about the brothers on the quads, if I was to defend them, is no stereo unit on that thing. It's like too small and too off-roading, too whatever. These guys are throwing revs. They're riding wheelies. They're hot. They're going right down the middle of the street. It's, it's, it's if you took just a full dirt bike and just with no license and no light and no nothing and just said, I'm just going to cruise down Ventura Boulevard at five miles an hour. Like, hey, cop, write me a ticket. See how it goes. I bet, I bet it's not going to go well for you. Guy's riding a wheelie. Guy rides a wheelie, clips a chick. No. Well, I, because it's crowded. And, like, people are, like, yeah, you know, yeah. they're, they're ignoring the red light and shit. Clips a chick, knocks her over. She's out in the street in front of the Italian place. What was the Italian place? Which is across the street? Carmine's. Carmine's. <laughs> yeah, that's how I remember. It's an Italian. There's an Italian steakhouse. It's, like, sort of kitty corner or candy corner, whatever it is, to Gibson's, and people are eating outside there. Knocks her over. She's now been pulled up onto the sidewalk. People are, like, tending to her. Um, the fellas that hit her, they didn't exchange insurance or anything. They just they just kept going. They just would go. He, he didn't stop her no. and get off the thing. No, no, no. No, no. Then uh, an ambulance with sirens, full sirens, just coming down. Now the sirens uh. coming. The guy's got rolling those sirens. Woo, woo, and I'm like, I, this could this fucking meal get less enjoyable? <laughs> fucking ambulance comes sliding in, full full scale fire truck with the sirens going. Mm-hmm. Slides in behind that guy. You know, I was thinking to myself, could we delineate 
the ambulance from the fire truck and the fire truck from the ambulance. I feel like every time the ambulance rolls in, the fire truck comes rolling in behind it. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a fire. There's a 43 year old white chick oh. who got knocked to the ground. Can't the I'm guys in the ambulance? Can't they? Ha- can't the ambulance I, guys yeah. handle that? I have asked that a million times. Yes, uh, the ambulance should be able to handle it. However, as my grandfather, who was a fire captain in San Francisco, would tell me, long after he was retired, all, all, all the firemen always get there first. The firefighters always get there first. When there's 911 call, firefighters always get there first. And they do. There's always a fire truck. That's okay, true. Okay, but that doesn't explain why they're there. He didn't say why. He just, had, he just gave me the, the, the <laughs> well, very they got objective there first. fact. They did. When I no. had that breathing problem, yes. that attack last year, the the EMT showed up and two fire trucks blocked the street. I, so, yeah, those, I'll never know. I, those guys want to get out of the house. They've had enough foosball and chili mm-hmm. to last them a lifetime. They want to get the fuck out of there. But either way, in this particular case, the ambulance pulled up first. Don't tell grandpa. God rest his soul. And then the fire truck. So fucking sirens blaring. Now they're pulled up. Lights flashing. I mean, it could be nothing could be further from a relaxing night out with steak and whatever. And we're in this tale. You're the victim. I'm sitting. I am. I'm sitting on the side that's facing the whole thing. So I was like, I'm Matt. DeAndrea has got his back to uh, rush. But I'm look. I'm just watching. It's like, oh, here comes the Polaris guys again. So uh, this person got knocked over. This person got taken to the hospital in the ambulance. And then at the very end, a fucking cop car pulled up to the same spot oh, with the finally fucking they got there. rollers going as well. But there was nothing going there. But all they did was back up traffic and everything. And so I told uh, Max Zapata, call one of those restaurants and like ask them like what went down. Is the chick OK? I was looking for it. I couldn't find anything in the newspaper about it or anything kind of looking online a little bit and they were like yeah people come up and down the street and yeah sometimes people get knocked over and yeah those guys ride the quads (laughs) and everyone's just kind of like yeah what are you going to do but I thought this is a pretty good example of what people do even non-criminals just what people do when the law says "Eh, we're just going to kind of bow out for a while here like we're going to clear out just, you know, we're, we're, we got bigger fish to fry. Like, what? how fast would you drive if there was no radar guns and no cops and no tickets? Like, what what, what, what would you do? Everyone would go 25 miles an hour faster on the freeways or wherever. Yeah, between riots and pandemics, I think we can all answer that. When there's nobody on the freeway, we were all doing 100. Right. So this is my little experiment, my little slice of life, that when you take the cops and you pull them out or you take a culture— And you go, okay, we're not going to fuck with the brothers anymore. Like, not for this shit. Like, I don't want to pull this guy over in the in the uh, quad runner and have a bunch of people filming me and fucking yelling at me and shit. Like, when you when you back out of that, the first person that understands it is the person that wants to ride their quad in the middle of the fucking street and wheelie over a chick like that. They're the first group that get the hint. They understand it. And there shall be more of this. Because there's nothing different about that Thursday night than a Thursday night a year ago when it probably wasn't happening other than the cops. You know, the cops aren't coming. And also, another group of citizens are going to buy a fucking gun and have it ready for their home because they also know the cops may not be coming. You You will shape behavior by this message of we're going to scale this back. It'll shape behavior on the bad bad guy side. It'll shape behavior on the good guy side, too. The folks you don't want doing what they're doing, they shall be doing that. Sorry, Max Pata. Yeah, Adam also had me look into the police scanners and, uh, and all the feeds of the police scanners trying to find the story of this, and I didn't find it, but, man, on a Thursday night, do not... Or just any the the police scanners are just horrific. Like the the stories that I was reading, just scanning through what happened on that Thursday night, was was truly disturbing. It's like right, none raped, none raped, a none was another. <laughs> oh uh, oh the oh you can rape a uh, a priest. I guess you can. Yeah. All right. I let's see. A four year old shot in crib. Four year old shot in bouncy castle. Four year old shot in park. Like, yeah. And they tell you where they were shot, like what part of the body. Oh. And everything. It was yeah. It was it was tough. Mm. Well, anyway. So there's no way this would have this would have made it. <laughs> well, interesting. Keep your eye on all those places that are peeling it back. But I got a real first, I got a front row seat to like when the cops pull out fo- how folks act. All right. Uh, 
you were going to say something, or I got a I got a audio clip to play. Uh, you have for some you phone guys. calls too. Oh, we got some phone calls. Sorry. And at some point, if it's possible, I have a um, I have to beg people for a quick charity thing. Yes. On your Can own I do time. that real quick? On your own time, during your own Thank time. you very much. <laughs> uh, Nick, 35, Buffalo, right after Nick from uh, Buffalo, New York. Very good. Nick? Ace man. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for all your common sense and wisdom. There's, few, you. there's only a few of us left. Thank you for including me <laughs> with you. <laughs> what, um, what do you think about all the NFL players opting out this season? I'm I'm a little confused by it. I you know first off your 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 health stuff is kind of your choice, but I can also judge. Uh, I think these guys are super healthy and super fit, and it doesn't seem to be affecting really healthy people the way it's affecting uh, elderly people or compromised people. And so, you know, a lot of these guys. First off, every time you have an NFL season, you always hear about so and so is not starting because he's got the flu or something like that. So there, people do get sick. They also get uh, a lot of uh, infections and rashes and um, God, what do they call that? Um, staph infections. Staff. They get a lot of staph because they're skinned up, playing on the turf and rubbing on each other and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. The average age of these guys is 26, right? And their their body fat is four percent. Like I, it feels it's not weird about to them. Me. What is the it reasons? About? The, oh, a lot of the reasons their... they're giving is their mom has you know comorbidities. Uh, their wife is mm. pregnant. Their wife has an no, autoimmune. I get so... the core. Yeah, I get the mama. And the, what about that? All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, I get the the mama with the comorbidity. That's something. Or the wife but is pregnant. No one's really stepping forward and being like, I'm not comfortable. They're they're really putting the ladies front and center. On oh, their blame it on the biatches. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what it does with the pregnant wife thing i don't i've not heard anything about that anyway uh i would tend to think that with a lot of the technology that we're just coming coming online very quickly and a lot of these like protocols with the zinc and the other the hydroxychloroquine there's a few other things that are now proving pretty promising and things would be taken prophylactically you know uh, i you know a uh, a month and a half from now, they could be doing it, but that's their decision. I don't know. Do they still get paid? I think they're going to get paid, right? Because so. otherwise that's a lawsuit. Yeah, all right. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of what if there's some A-listers that are on that list. I know there's some guys who start, maybe guys who start on the defensive side of the ball, but are there any, like, big name, you know, household name, kids buying their jersey kind of guys? I think Marquise Goodwin is probably the biggest name, and that's not even a you know, pro, I wouldn't call it a household name in the NFL. There was an offensive lineman who I think is pretty prominent, but again, offensive lineman uh, who announced today he's skipping the season, and he put a lot of the um, onus on the fact that his son or his young child is has like battling cancer, and I guess that speaks to the point that. Whether you know these are these are young, healthy guys who probably, if they get it, let's say, God forbid, they'll probably be fine ultimately. But you're carrying it regardless, just like a 50 year old would, just like an anyone would. So if you bring it home to your son who has cancer or or a baby who hasn't gotten their shots yet, I mean, that's that's something to, to be concerned about. All right, well, they can make their own decisions. The good news is, um, Hard Knocks training camp is coming back soon, and yeah. I am pre. Uh, tumescent. They're doing two teams, right? The two. Yeah, they're doing the, the Chargers Rams. and the Rams. Yes, pre tumescent for that uh, for that coming. Uh, They've already done the Rams, right? Uh, yeah, they did the Rams. I think a couple yeah. of years ago when Fisher showed up. Yeah, back when Fisher was there. Yeah, Fisher with the fucking glasses that break in yeah. half and hang around his neck. Yeah. Asshole. <laughs> what's your uh, what charity, Gina? Thank you. So and I'm sorry to spring this on you, but just figured I might as well wedge it in. So, you know, twice a year, I um, I not only beg people for stuff, but I host this really, really fun graduation ceremony for kids at the Children's Hospital mm -hmm. of Los Angeles. And of course, for the first time, it's online. So instead of getting to, you know, play with all the kids and, and do all this stuff, they're all doing it on Zoom. Um, so I feel that this year, it's even more important that when they drive up for their graduation to get their little diploma and certificate, and they're good goodie bags that these goodie bags are really 
really spectacular. Um, all I ask is there's 10 kids. They range from seven to 13. They're boys. This is a child self-esteem camp because these kids have a lot of illnesses. Um, they they uh, deal with um, how to talk to bullies if you're being bullied about your illness, how to look people in the eye confidently, tell them what your illness is and then move on. Um, they do arts, they do crafts, they do music, they do all these cool things through the art of Elysium, which is what reminded oh. me oh, yeah. talking about Elysium. So, um, so this is literally just 10 items, new items that are all the same that you think boys would like. It could be anything. It could be party favors. It could be soccer balls. It could be a $10 gift card from Amazon, socks, sunglasses, anything that you think they would have a good time with. How about black uh, women glow different t-shirts? But we're going to t-shirt? need nine more of those. Oh, um, okay. So if you will just go to my twitter page it is pinned to the top all of the information is there it's at gina grad and the a little blurb about what they do over there is is uh, on top as well as the address if everything could be sent by august 7th that would be great because that'll give them a couple of days to sort everything before they hand out all the goodie bags also not only have these kids been through the ringer in their short tiny little lives more than anyone i know but i've been to all of these graduations for the boys and the girls there's big families. And I can tell you that if you are spending all of whatever money you have on your child because they have some sort of disfigurement, the brother or sister is going without. Mm. So when they get these big bags full of fun stuff, then it's like Christmas. The brother gets to have some stuff and the sisters get excited and everybody gets something. So you can contact me directly. Just go or go to my Twitter. It's pinned to the top. Thank you so much in advance. Thank you for being a saint, Gina Grant. Mm, my pleasure. All right. We got a little clip from my audio book that Dawson pulled out, which uh, you can get wherever you get audio books. Uh, what is the clip, Dawson? Uh, this clip kind of describes the uh, inherent irony in you testifying before Congress. And uh, you make some... some uh, uh, you notice the differences between the people sitting around you and you yourself. Mm. That's kind of fun. The congressional hearing room was stately. There was a lot of clean blue carpet and polished white marble. And there were a lot of oil paintings of dead guys. As soon as I got to the hearing room and looked at the murderer's row of intellectuals, I somehow found myself in company with Ben Shapiro, New York University law school professors, college presidents, my shitty student habits kicked into overdrive. I asked who was going first because I didn't want it to be me. Mm -hmm. I needed some time to cram and thought if one or two of these other blowhards went first, I could scribble down some notes and skate through. We sat down at the big mahogany desk with the nameplates, microphones, and water glasses. There were congressmen on the dais and witnesses in the chamber. This was real. This was on C-SPAN. I looked over at Ben Shapiro, who was sitting next to me. He had five and a half typewritten, all caps, single-spaced pages. You could tell he had rehearsed. It was a minute a page. He was locked and loaded and ready to go. But technically, he had next to nothing. Because he was next to me, and I had nothing. The chick to my left from NYU Law had her stuff completely prepared in a neat leather binder. Meanwhile, I was looking down at a well-worn steno pad with a handful of words like children, future, law, order, Purell, Chicano, Dr. Drew, and gravity misspelled with arrows, numbers, and crossouts. It looked like a Chinese roadmap. Following Ben Shapiro in congressional testimony is like following an Indian kid in a spelling bee. By the way, roll on this, Dawson. How relieved would you be if somebody said, Dawson, you've got to follow an Indian kid in a spelling bee. And then they paused and went, American Indian. <laughs> How relieved. <laughs> you just be like, oh, thank God. Dodged the bullet. I spelled box with three X's last week. Woo. All right. Here we go. <laughs> A little sidebar with uh, Dawson over there. A little bonus content. That's yeah. why you got to get the audiobook. Yeah, we would just sit in this building alone, like on a Saturday, and sometimes 
hour number four, I'd get a little punchy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just look at Dawson through the glass. Um, all right, let me hit uh, Simply Safe. Most home security companies trap you with high prices, tricky contracts, and lousy customer support. There's only one Simply Safe. There, it's a no brainer. It's two eyes in there, by the way. Simply Safe. Everything to protect your home and arsenal sensors and cameras for every room, window, and door. Tailored specifically to you and your home. Professional monitoring day and night. Ready to uh, send police, fire, medical professionals. Set it up in under an hour. Uh, Peel and stick. Batteries last up to 10 years. No technician required. No uh, contracts, pushy sales guys, hidden fees, or fine print. Starts at just 15 bucks a month. U.S. News and World Report named it the best overall home security system of 2020. Simply Safe, right, Dawson? Head to simplysafe.com slash Adam and get a free HD camera for our listeners. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam to make sure they know our show sent you. Uh, San Antonio this weekend. Ben Shapiro is going to be up with us uh, doing the live pod on Friday. And then uh, Gutfeld, Greg Gutfeld, will be on Saturday. So there's probably a few of those tickets left. San Antonio, laugh out loud. And then I'm doing stand-up. After that, and uh, before that, Mike August is going to get a smoothie, and I'm going to get a goddamn haircut. I don't know why. I'm, 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 I'm obsessed. I, I talked to, uh, I saw a good Matt. I saw Matt uh, D'Andrea earlier today, and he got his haircut. And I was like, hey, how'd you get a haircut? And he's like, well, my guy, he opens the shop, but he keeps the curtains down. You know, it keeps, it keeps it dark in there, you know. Speakeasy. And then I go in the back way. And then uh, there's a woman there who's posing as a, and it's like, yeah, to get a fucking haircut, just to get a haircut. You have to, you, you need a secret handshake to get a fucking haircut. I, it's, it's driving me insane. They already, they implemented all the rules of how you get a haircut and everyone did it. Uh, uh, Olga, uh, my nanny, my nanny now, Olga, cause my kids are too old to have a, a nanny, her daughter. Do- her da- Emmy's uh, Emmy's uh, wife and and her daughter Paula um, cuts hair. Bought all the shit they told her to buy, all the thermometers and gloves and all the masks. She bought all that shit, and now she's shut down. Can't can't fucking go to work. I, it's it's weird. You know, it's it's funny. I was I was saying to Doctor Drew the other day. It's like it's like. The founding fathers, when when these guys were drafting all these documents and constitutions and whatnot that make this country, they were they're always worried about tyrannical dictators, and they were worried about uh, other powers coming in with armadas and stuff and taking. They didn't want this. They didn't want too much power on the legislative side or the state side or the right. They're trying to figure out the balance, but they never saw. Dumb people running cities. That they didn't. They were looking for like evil. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like right. they like he's evil gonna, genius. Yeah, like Garcetti's going to shut all the salons and then he's going to buy up all the real estate cheap. And that's it. No, no, he's just dumb. We just have fucking dumb power drunk assholes running California. We're not. There's not anything behind it. I, I wish there was something behind it. Maybe. Maybe uh, a run for president or something in, in Gavin Newsom's case. But the founding fathers could have never anticipated dumb with no agenda. That that there's no nothing you can craft in a document that says a fucking dumb guy who thinks like a middle aged broad is going to take control of the seventh biggest economy in the world and run it into the ground. And the founding fathers would keep going. What's his angle? But what's his angle? He's going to enrich himself. His son's going to take over. No, no. He's just an asshole. Doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And now we're all being punished. And it's like. Is he going to make a gulag? Is he going to run people off to death camps? Is he going to collect all their money? It's like, he's going to build himself up. Oh, no, he's going to send them money. He's going to get a golden train. Like, what's he going to do? It's like, no, just a dumb guy who likes fucking power and is fucking stupid. He's going to run the economy into the fucking ground for no good reason. I I would love to sit down with the founding fathers and explain, go go ahead and ride around this guy. How are you going to prevent us from electing dumb people to fucking run everything into the fucking ground? All right. Anyway, I'm getting a haircut in uh, San Antonio. Look out, man. And Mike's getting a smoothie. All right. We're going to take ourselves a uh, quick break, and then we'll come uh, right back with the news right after this. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking 
viral, all those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gina Grad, trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drunk meltdown. Seek news with Gina Gina Grad. The news with Gina Grad. So the Department of Justice announced an expansion of its Operation Legend, which I did not know it had a name, and will send federal troops into Cleveland, Detroit, and Milwaukee to assist local police in fighting an uptick in violent crime. I got to send them down to Rush Street so uh, (laughs) this brother can enjoy a steak. Well, this comes on the heels of federal forces, Homeland Security, and ICE agents pulling back in Portland. Uh, so now they're going to Milwaukee, Cleveland, and Detroit. The plan is send is to send 42 agents to Detroit, 25 to Cleveland and Milwaukee. They'll be deployed from the FBI, DEA, and other agencies. Attorney General William Barr says the expansion of Operation Legend is necessary to assist cities in a rise of violent that have a rise of violent crime, and is not like the surge in Portland, where federal. Uh, agents were sent to control protests. The new deployment is not sitting well with everybody, though. Uh, Leaders like um, Mayor Tom Barrett in Milwaukee says, I'm extremely concerned that President Trump is looking for opportunities to create more political division in cities across the nation. Well, first off, how is that possible? We can create more. (laughs) Number two, you know, somebody just said, look, um, if the people in Portland are trying to burn down a federal courthouse, then you're allowed to send federal troops to protect your federal courthouse, which is fine. Um, The uh, this thing where it's like they're pulling up and on unmarked cars and pulling peaceful protesters off the street and throwing them in a gulag and shit. It's like that. That's not happening. We need to get things under control. And there's an interesting thing uh, Ben Shapiro said at some point, I remember hearing it, said the most important thing you could do, like you need in these communities, these communities of color and these communities, poor communities, like the first in the first thing you need to do in that community is get crime under control. You have to get crime under control. That's first. Everyone wants to talk about schooling and businesses and stuff. If you don't have crime under control, then what businesses do you have? Like when you have businesses, just go like, I'm not going in there. I'm not hanging my shingle in that part of town. It's like, it's too dangerous. Someone's, I don't want an employee to get shot at the store I'm opening or whatever it is. The first thing you have to do is get crime under control. The next thing is then have the businesses come in and have people participating in those businesses and schools and whatever else. But anyway, it's a weird, I've, it's such a bizarre relationship we're having with rules and law enforcement. Now I went through the first 50 years of my life with, you know, it was a couple little flare ups, a couple little discussions. Always. If you sit next to Mark Garagos, he's going to tell you about this guy being in prison wrongly in the system and bail and shit like that. But man, it is just, taken over our world but either way all right yeah we'll see what happens there uh, in those three cities meanwhile johnny depp's libel case in the uk has come to a close after three weeks of dramatic and somewhat sometimes entertaining testimony depp sued over an article in the sun that called him a wife beater during his short-lived marriage to amber heard in her closing submission the attorney for news group newspapers owner of the sun said quote there is no doubt that mr depp regularly and systematically abused his wife in his closing submission the actor's lawyer called Heard a compulsive liar and said at its very core we say it demonstrates that she is an abuser not mr depp He is no wife beater. A ruling isn't expected for several weeks, but this was three weeks of craziness. I don't. So what I don't understand is, although it was interesting when Garagas said the reason England has different laws than we do, and it's a a lower threshold to sue a news entity. So there's many more of these lawsuits in England than there are here in the United States because we have a higher threshold to sue CNN or the Washington Post or whatever. It's a higher threshold burden of proof. But he's over there and he's suing the paper. But what is she doing? Why is she there? Well, that's the thing. Is I he mean, getting it, divorced and suing them? Like, I don't know. No. What the court. How, what is the he's suing them for libel, but or slander, whichever one it is. But libel, libel. But then why is she there? 
I can look it up, but my guess is she's a witness for the defense. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, really? Benedict it's Arnold. The prosecutor in her, in her closing argument said he was an abuser, but didn't specifically say wife beater, which is what the, the issue is over. Like she, Abuse covers a lot of things, very nebulous sometimes. Wife beater is, is very specific. So I wonder if they're backing off that. I don't know. Um, it seems weird that she would stop what she's doing and go to England for a month and yeah, have her so, have her well, if you're have her so, soil. Yeah, what is she her, doing? I don't know what she's doing. Yeah, she's, she's the not main with Elon witness. Musk. She's the main witness. Does she get paid? She must get paid well, to be a witness. Well, uh, let me tell you one thing I've learned: uh, court experts, like court. And the experts, like financial like experts, forensic accountant, all those guys, they get paid a shitload of money by whichever side cuts the check. You know, like when they bring in their expert, when Mark Garagos brings in his expert, he says exactly what they figured out to say as the as the quote unquote expert who's getting paid. I guess she's paid. an expert on Johnny Depp. So but, I, you know, I don't. I don't I, it she's... seems like it's like a weird way for her to spend a month. Just I'm going to go to England and, and have everyone talk about me shitting in bed and stuff like that. But remember, she wrote that um, open letter or op ed or whatever for was it Huffington Post or about how she's a domestic abuse survivor. So maybe she's doubling down on that. You know, maybe she's she wants to be seen as uh, a leading advocate for surviving domestic abuse. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know maybe she, Max Paddock kind of can, thing. can uh, can look. But either way. God damn. <laughs> what a crazy. First off, I don't think, uh, I don't, you know, when I was a kid, it was always like, be rich and be famous. The, you know, rich and famous, the lifestyles of the rich and famous. I don't know. Is it worth it anymore? Like, mm. I, I just feel like you're going to get sued. Your shit's all going to be out there. Someone's going to hate you. Eventually, we're going to go full Ellen on your ass. I don't know. I just, it's like, I, don't, I I have kids. I would kind of hope that they would just kind of get along and slide under, under the, the radar. radar a little bit. They can make money. They can have a profession and even be rich. But the rich and the famous part. I don't know if the famous. That's but, what Steve Martin always said. If you have to pick between rich and famous, pick rich. Because famous used to mean you could walk into a club and give the mayor D a hundred bucks and he'd throw somebody out and just put you right at the front of the Copa. Or it meant when you got pulled over, like, oh, oh, Mr. Carson, yes, I'll escort you home. You seem to have been drinking tonight. You know, you used to, there was a lot of perks. I don't know if you get those perks anymore. Yeah. I, I can't, uh, I can't go down to building and safety and go like, all right, who do I got? Who's, who's who skids do I got to grease? I got to grease some palms here because uh, this guy, I'm a big time celebrity. Like, they don't, you just fucking pull a ticket and get in line. There's no... I don't know that there's any more celebrity anymore. Um, yeah, I'm actually had to look into that because I keep seeing Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, and I and I guess she's a witness, but she's just out there the because she hates Johnny or because the papers lining her pockets. Well, if she's subpoenaed, she'd have a choice, right? I guess. I guess if she's subpoenaed, yeah, that's true. All right, let me hit. Uh, let's see, what do I got? I got something on my screen here that seems different than what I'm looking at. But let me just hit uh, quick Geico here right now. Geico's offering an extra 15% credit on car and motorcycle and RV policies as well. That's a 15% credit on top of the money you would be saving already if you went to Geico because uh, that's what they do. They save you money on your insurance. You want to insure your Polaris or your quad, you could probably do it at Geico as well. There's never been a better time to switch and save at Geico. Just go to geico.com. All right. Uh, keep going, uh, Gina Gran. All right. Well, Lou Williams, he is a Clippers guard, and he's been hit with a 10-day quarantine after social media posts showed him at a strip club called Magic City when he was supposed to only leave the NBA bubble in Orlando to go to his grandfather's funeral. But that was the headline a day or two ago. The new headline is everybody throwing his, their support behind him for because of a picture, which I'll show you in a second. So... William's excuse was Do we that he, know that the grandfather, that the wake wasn't at a strip club? 
Uh, so we'll just uh, put a button on this story. He said he only went to the strip club for the chicken wings. And even though that seems far-fetched, people have been posting a picture of these chicken wings, and now everybody believes it. Here's a picture of it. That's at the stri- at Magic City Strip Club. That's what you get. A incredible looking spread of various, uh, and there's even like a Lou Williams lemon pepper chicken wing, and it looks like a barbecue and a fried and French fries. And now everyone is coming to his support and his aid on Twitter saying, I get it. I get why you'd uh, chance getting out of the bubble to go get that spread of chicken wings. Maybe this is some diabolical thing to get the customers not to touch the dancers, you know, because when they get the lap dance, the hands no. always like slide around and yeah. cup the butt cheeks. But when you're covered with hot sauce, yeah, hot wing sauce, and the, yeah, yeah, I think you, you, you pretty much keep it, keep it, keep it to yourself. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Can they? He's got, he's got to quarantine him for 10 for days 10 now. Days, he's going to miss. Uh, he's going to miss. Shit, where'd it go? Uh, he, I think he's missing at least two games. Um, yeah, yeah, give give him yeah, a he's week. Yeah, let him, if nothing's cooking after a week, let him back on the court. That's what I say. Well, you don't know what the ladies have. We don't know what the ladies have. That's right. Yeah, it's like uh, you're, cor- you're uh, coronavirus free, but you got crabs. <laughs> that's the bad news. Like if I'm the doctor, that's that definitely be my joke if I came through the door, right? Well, the good news is that's right. It's uh, it's like um, uh, what's his name, Job from uh, Arrested Development, uh, Will Will Arnett. Don't worry, these ladies have been nowhere near the food. <laughs> right. So Google just announced that they're allowing their employees to work remotely till next summer. They want to give their employees ability to plan ahead. Meanwhile, Facebook is allowing employees to work from home until the beginning of next year. And Twitter says, yeah, you can just stay at home forever. We don't care. You can work from home permanently. Really do you, so do you think that's their way of shutting down some real estate because it's not necessary? <sighs> Well, you know, I always kind of liken it to what we used to talk about going to the radio and going to these big buildings and the parking structures and lobbies and security and, and everything. And it turns out everyone can just kind of do what they want from their home. Uh, the only people that can't do it kind of ironically are the people who build the homes. The, mm. the All the workers still have to get out and hit yep. the road and do their work. But the folks with their phone and their computer and, you know, as you guys have proven and I'm, when I'm done today, I'm going to do some zoom, you know, interview thing. Uh, we go up on stage and, you know, Ben Shapiro and Greg Gutfeld, the pop in jail Coven, you know, everyone just sort of pops in now. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if you kind of look at it, if you think about percentage, so percentage of Americans that had to go to work, you know, turn of the century or 120 years ago. E- ironically, there's a lot of doctors that worked from an office in their house and dentists and stuff like did that. House calls. Yeah, it, house calls. And did house calls and also had an office. It is speculated that my house, uh, Maxipad, if you can find the, the picture, but the house I grew up in famously had two doors right next to each other, two big fucking front doors right two huge front doors just eight inches apart at a 90 degree angle and it was always speculated that oh that was the guy's office like he'd bring the people in you go through that door you're in his you're in his doctor's office you go in the other door you're in the house so um so uh, but but you go back 120 years most all americans had to get up and go to work you had to go to a factory it's a picture of the house I grew up in with two big doors that are six inches apart, which is just one more weird wrinkle from my childhood. But uh, there it, there but it at was. Least there's a satisfying theory because otherwise it's just it makes my head hurt looking at it. Yes. So um, the house is torn down now. But um, everyone had to get up and go to work. Some people had to go to a mine. Some people had to go to a camp, you know, logging. Some people had to go to a mill textile factory, you know, just get up and go to a factory, you know, all day. Then Mm. as we started advancing, less people had to get up and go to a factory, but they got up and went somewhere. But the somewhere, see, if you work, I have a bunch of guys, they work at the shop. 
The shop, uh, they're prepping a car for a race. The shop's got a bunch of shit in it, a bunch of tools and cutters and ways to fabricate and welders and shit. It ain't in their living room. They don't have that in their living room. Gina, you go to a place. Brian, you did go to a place. Uh, I go to a place where everything that's in this place could be in my living room Hmm. or my den. You know, in the past, when you're working at a lumber mill or you're working at a Ford factory, well, then good luck with the lumber mill in your living room. But if you think about it, if you're an attorney or your broadcaster or your secretary or you're an accountant, you know, my accountant goes into work, sits at their desk, opens the same computer they have at home and looks at all the shit they theoretically could look at at home. So the more technology moves forward, the more where you're going to has the same stuff that you just left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and you couldn't say that about a mill or mine or and no. anything, right? And it's funny because you kind of know intellectually that everyone's working from home, but I, I never think it. Like if I call customer service or if I'm calling, you know, a, a law office or an accountant or whatever, I just, just you just picture everyone at work. So when you hear their dog bark in the background or you hear like a coffee grinding, it's like, oh, like it's it's off-putting. I think, I think the new conceit is... The hourly thing, the time clock, the how many hours did you put in, in a way, it's kind of out the window because we opened up weekends to work right. and evenings to work. And, and we sort of we got rid of the calendar. Everything used to be closed on Sundays. I could remember Sundays like, oh, man, everything's closed. You got to wait till Monday if you want to buy that toy or whatever it is. Once we got rid of the calendar, then we also got rid of the clock. So now everyone just has tasks, but they don't really have clocks. I'm sure Christy's kind of that way. Like she's at home working. She has tasks to do. Yeah, well, my my window into into the corporate world is, of course, Christy. She's in the other room right now, probably on a call or a video conference, which she is all day. And I can say, like, they get business done pretty efficiently with people just working from home because you're right it's not you're not just putting in your hours you don't have to have someone breathing over your neck you're get the shit done you know what i mean there's a there's a apply uh, an assignment a task that's due this week or the client wants this by the end of the day just get your shit done that's where we're at and also just because you're at work doesn't mean you're working you know i mean look no further than five feet behind me where Gabe was like playing video games when I was hitting the road. Like you don't have to work just because you're at work. You can, you got your smartphone. A lot of people checking their roto leagues and you porn and God knows uh, what else. All right, let me hit uh, stamps.com here as we adjust to our new normal. Still need to be smart about our business. Luckily stamps.com makes it easier. Well, I'll this is exactly what we're talking about. Why are you going to the post office? What do you need a post office anymore? We got stamps.com. I've used them here for over 10 years. We sent out merch that are improperly labeled the backs of the shirts, not the stamps.com. We send out books. We send out uh, DVDs. It's all stamps.com. Whether you're a small business sending in invoices or online seller, uh, Keep shipping those products. Just work from home and work smart. Mail stuff. It's easy with stamps.com. Let's you buy and print U.S. postage for any letter, any package. Five cents off every first class stamp and up to 62% discount on USPS and UPS shipping rates as well. I got a special offer, four week trial plus free postage and that digital scale, which I think goes up to 80 pounds. And there's no long-term commitment. Go to stamps.com, click the microphone, top of the homepage, and type in Adam. All right, Gina, what else? So after years of development, the 2021 Ford Bronco finally debuted earlier this month, month, which caused a frenzy of pre-ordering the vehicle. So many people pre-ordered the Bronco that there's already an 18-month wait list. The start of production is right on schedule, but it will still take months and months for enough Broncos to roll off the assembly line to meet demand. We have a picture of it. I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. There's plenty of pictures. but That's there's like the one. Bronco 2, right? A little like squatty one. Sure. Yeah. Well, there was the there was the first generation Bronco that like they the OJ Bronco that we all know. Right. That was the they're... second Bronco. So the first Bronco was like I don't know, sixty three, sixty four to like seventy 
something. They had a first gen Bronco. Those are highly coveted now. People pay oh. seventy grand for like a, just a Bronco, just a stock Bronco from the late sixties. Then they went to the Bronco two which was mm-hmm. the one that had the weird curved glass in the back that rolled over all the time. That was a piece of shit. Then they went to the OJ Bronco. Okay. I okay. think. And that, and then that was a bigger Bronco. And then they kind of phased it out. And now everyone's want, wanting to get back. Ford has a, their new F-150 truck is gas and electric and you can run 240 off it. It has like a built-in really? generator. So it's like if you're working, you could run an air compressor. You uh. could you could plug in all your tools and charge all your battery tools on the job site. You don't need smart. Electricity is a big deal when you're building. Like if you're building a cabin and you don't have power, that's a or just building a home and you don't have the temporary power brought in, that's a big deal. So they're they're really making strides over there and it's it's nice to see 100 year old companies like evolving moving changing like still going still producing i i I like that part of this this uh i like that 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 story so it's nice yeah it's back and uh people are going nuts for it and as i said there's a big move toward all these uh off-road type vehicles because each time you put, you know, every five people that buy a Prius, one person buys a Jeep and puts a lift kit on it. Like that's that's where we're going as a society for every one person that says there was a microaggression, uh, that they were the victim of a microaggression. Uh, another person is signing up for a tough mutter or, or taking their first jujitsu class. You, you know what I mean? Like that's that's where we're just going as a nation. So it's pretty much. safe rooms and octagons and then just Priuses and four buys. Those are, those are what you're going to see. That's where we're going. I've seen more Jeeps and more knobby tires and more lift kits, especially on fucking rush street in uh, Chicago. Mm. But it, it, yeah, this thing's a massive seller. And I think, I think it has a lot to do with the climate. I I really like this social, uh, political it's, it's, it's a climate. We no more, no more four door sedans anymore. Everyone's got to yeah. got to kind of you have to kind of plant your flag. You know, you have to make a statement. Like I'm fucking, I'm driving something that I could s- survive the apocalypse in, or I'm um, I'm hugging a tree. Like I'm I'm no more just sort of four door sedans. Yes, that's funny you mentioned mentioned survive the apocalypse. My first thought was uh, related to what you're saying. Like I wonder how many people buying that are ordering it are like shit's getting crazy you know, riots and whatever. Like if, if I want to just take off somewhere, it's nice to know they have the freedom to do that. Yeah. You can go uh, full red dawn, man. <laughs> All right. What else we got, uh, Gina Grand? I will tell you, but um, before I forget, you know how we talk sometimes about cities that do not match their name. Hmm. There was one that's been on my mind that just, I just remembered. I want to see what you guys think. Fancy, fancy name, not such a fancy place. Diamond bar. Oh. Mm, I mean, it has the word diamond in I know. it. <laughs> Probably not that far from Corona, no. California. It's mentioned He's... in the book. It's Diamond, diamond, diamond Bar. Bar? It's a great name for a casino. <laughs> not a great name for a town. Okay. Dawson's got done. a memory like a fucking bear trap, man. That's impressive. I fucking said it in the book, and it's I don't remember saying it. That's impressive. And apparently what it really, it, it's it's an ode to the a, a brand. A you know what would have been better, though? It would have been better if I just kind of poo-pooed it. Like, hey, it's all right, cutie. That's a little girl. That's uh, that's what we call a cute. F- that's what we, you know what? Let's round up. Let's make that one a five. But <laughs> sort of leave the heavy lifting in the comedy department to the ace man. And then Dawson uh, kick, kicks in with the, he put it in the book. That would have been good. Yeah. So a federal prosecutor accused a Florida man Monday of fraudulently obtaining nearly four million dollars from the Paycheck Protection Program and using some of the money to buy a Lamborghini. Next to Pomona, <laughs> not Corona, so says uh, oh. Mike Zapata. But it can't That's be pretty... too far from Corona, can it? It's like 20 The Pomona minutes. Mining it... Company, good restaurant. Yeah, all right, sorry. They used so the money to buy a Lambo? Yeah, 29 years old, charged with bank fraud, according to NBC. Uh, federal agents seized the car, which valued at $318,000. Uh, 
and three and a half million from his bank account when he was arrested. So he wanted 13 and a half million in paycheck protection loans through the applications on behalf of different companies that included false statements about employee payroll expenses. And according to the documents, these purported employees either didn't exist or earned a fraction of what he claimed on his uh, applications. But he got $4 million. So whatever he did worked for, for at least a short time. Uh, I can't, it, it, and they went out and bought a, a Ventador or Uricon or something like that. Um, the, the point is this, you got to resist buying the $300,000 plus Lambo. You got to wait 15 minutes after the check clears. Like it's like, you know, these guys that like they kill their wife, she d- drowns mysteriously. And then it's like, they collect the insurance and then 10 minutes later, they're seen in Acapulco with their new yep. girlfriend. It's like, mm-hmm. you got to just lay low for six months. Yeah. It just it's fucking like, lay low. Yeah, it's like Goodfellas. He rips the mink off of her. Right. And that, the other guy bought a Cadillac. Take it Take back. It back. It's in Take my it mother-in-law's name. Take it back. <laughs> right. He bought yeah. a Huracan. Yeah. Um, yeah, just wait. Wait. Just just, just let the paint dry a little. And just, it just it'll be in the bank. Just I, If I did this, I would just live completely not that I live a normal life, but if in fact I was a normal person lived a normal life, I wouldn't change a fucking thing for five years. Like you I go I, full Warren Buffett. So yeah. you still drive your Porsches. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't drive on the street, Brian, but I I'm get sorry. your trip. That was, that was absurd. <laughs> yes. Hey baby, I'm driving a Datsun 510 uh, in the next yeah. race. So I'm going, I'm slumming it, man. All right, let's do one more, Gina Grant. All right. Well, very, very tragic news. A truck crash in southern Missouri luckily resulted in no injuries, but whiskey drinkers are oh. heartbroken. A semi-truck carrying 12,000 bottles of Templeton rye overturned, mm. dumped its entire load onto the highway. The bottles of booze were picked up in Templeton, Iowa, and was en route to a warehouse in Arkansas. The truck was deemed a total loss, and so was the whiskey, which was valued at... $325,000. Wow, same price almost as the, as the Lambo Huracan. <laughs> yeah, Templeton is is good. I love a rye because it's got a little spice to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think those guys came in here once and we talked to them. I think it was a whole That's Al right. Capone story and Prohibition. And there's yeah, we whole... used to make the better man with it. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. always... Uh, it's always a, flowers. It's always a good story. Everyone, uh, everyone wants a good story now. They want a good story with their booze. They want a good story in life. It's weird. Everyone, everyone's sharing what they did. Here's where we were. Here's where we ate. Here's where we went. You know what I mean? Like all of a sudden we've turned into these crazy gypsies. There's like weaving tails. I like back on tours. It's weird because families, you know, everything was sort of close to the vest. Like when I was younger, like you don't talk about this, you know, you don't talk about your finances or if there's an illness or, you know, it's like we keep it private, not my family, but I just mean regular families would be like, Hey, we don't put our dirty laundry out there now full circle, man, or, or 180, just pushing it out. Like everyone's just shoving it out there. I was just talking about this the other day. If I if I could have told a, a an eleven year old Gina that one day it was going to be cool to talk about your anxiety disorder <laughs> and not be so shaming that you didn't leave your house for three months and miss three months of school, I would have been on easy street. But it was not like that in in middle school in in my day. Hold on, you're weird. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. Jeez, I, I, thought I, I was such, such a kidding about that shit. That's freaking had, me out, dude. I had such a horrific panic disorder when my oh. parents got divorced. Wow. And, um, uh, and too I much information. Uh, thanks for sharing. No, this is one of those you stories. <laughs> yeah. No, let me tell you about Ritalin. <laughs> uh, Chris, we've probably come to the end of the show, right? <laughs> yeah, we're, oh. we're, we're there. Yeah. Sir, you got Gina. my period really late. Do you oh, want to hear about Gina's it? Gina's oh, internet connection's oh. all over the place, man. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a new episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me hit. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> Part of it is a good thing. People don't have to. You know, it's like I was a bedwetter when I was a kid, and that would have that was devastatingly oh, embarrassing. You know, like sure. that was so humiliating. I don't know if you're bedwetter as a kid now. It's like. You may get a few, uh, pardon the pun, brownie points or something. I, I don't, 
I, Everyone's I, like Adam Sandler. It's cool to be yeah. a band. Just say Billy Madison. <laughs> yeah, Billy Madison. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, let me hit the uh, McGuire's here. Car waxes have come a long way. Last year, McGuire's introduced a hybrid ceramic spray wax. It's advanced SIO2 hybrid technology delivers ceramic wax protection and durability. No rubbing, curing, or buffing. Provides extreme water bead action. That's how you know it's working. And this year, McGuire's launched their liquid version, so it seals the paint for long-lasting protection against the elements. Easy to use. Apply it like traditional liquid wax. Protect yourself. Get that McGuire's. I love the uh, ceramic spray detailer. It smells good. It works. You don't have to wash your car in the driveway and waste all those gallons of water anymore. Just pull it under something shady. Pull it in your garage. Take microfiber rag out. Just literally use the uh, hybrid ceramic spray detailer and clean your car that way. It's good for bird droppings, boost the gloss, enhance protection, dust, fingerprints, everything else. Ceramic made easy. It's McGuire's. All right, Gina Grad, let's bring it on home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Uh, I'm going to put it in post. I didn't have the damn thing in there. Okay. All right. You can go to adamcarolla.com and uh, find out where we're going to be doing live shows everywhere and get the audio book and all that good stuff. Where you, If you go to Amazon, leave a review. I will read. I do read your reviews, and I appreciate them. So uh, go ahead and do that with the book. Uh, Cousin Sal and Sheck coming up uh, next on Good Sports. Until next time, Adam Carolla, for poor Gina Grad and Bald <laughs> Brian saying mahalo. <laughs> <laughs>